Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Aries. If Aries is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. So our card tonight is the Four of Wands and that has everything to do with completion. This card always makes me think of, uh, well, order, of course, but I more precisely like to think about the concept of having spiritual order in our lives. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Let's take a look at these tea leaves and see what they have to say. Kind of all... Mostly on one side here. And so if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Okay, and immediately I am seeing a face here. Eyes, mouth. And it almost looks like it has a pipe right here. Um, like an old tobacco pipe. <laughs> and... Um, it reminds me very much of uh, Oscar the Grouch, this figure. So I do feel like there has in it, look, <laughs> the color of the card even matches. So it all makes sense. Um, so I do feel like there has been a time where, uh, you know, you just have been feeling a little bit grumpy, right? Um just maybe a little bit, I don't know, short-tempered or annoyed. Everything is just, you know, uh, one click away from being just a, a, too much. You just want to go home, get in bed, and sleep, right? Just leave me alone. Let me rest. And um, you've been busy, <laughs> when are you not right um so you just haven't had time you haven't time to kind of escape and do your own thing um always lots of things going on and so um you know i i see this and i think it, like all things this is a transient emotion this is a um little slice of time um and you know i think this too shall pass um, and I, and I do, I feel like this is, um, very much kind of an old coping mechanism. Um, and I think that this is something that we all have, right? We all have this coping mechanism. We get grumpy. We, uh, kind of, um, push people away a little bit. We just kind of want to do our, don't just leave me alone. I just need to do my own thing. Right. Um, I just, I can't have even one more thing go wrong today. Um, and so, you know, I think that, um, you know, this is, this is kind of a passing state. So um, this maybe even has already come to pass and you are on to the next thing. I want to look at this. Okay, so we have a person standing here. Uh, looking over and there's kind of a cauldron. You can even see it has the chain, like a very traditional looking cauldron. Um, so we have also the goddess, a goddess over here. Um, you can see kind of the long, um, oh, what is that thing called? Um, like the kind of a Greek wrap, um, the, not a toga, but something kind of like that. Um, okay. And the arms kind of lifted. The head is right here. Um, and uh, beautiful. I imagine kind of, um, <laughs> a scene of conjuring here. Um, you know, kind of see these little, uh, these little, uh, elementals, one right here, maybe kind of a serpenty one right here, um, all kind of dancing in the shadows of the room. There is kind of a, a, um, a beautiful blue flame heating the cauldron and, 
and um you know sacred words are being uttered and uh the goddess has been summoned and she is there she is there to witness she is there uh to you know um be the muse of the thing of this operation and so i do i feel like there is a sense of taking things into your own hand um you are somebody who is uh, self-reliant to the core, right? Um, you absolutely can make everything from nothing. Um, you are very resourceful. Um, and I think that you are divinely guided through and through. You are probably a practitioner of some kind, if you know it or not. You have a magical way about you. You are good at manifesting. You speak to those other things. Um, you probably see things or hear things or um, feel things. I wouldn't be surprised if you were also a healer or worked in the healing um, uh, industry of some kind, medical or otherwise. And... Um, and so I, I see here, uh, this is where your order comes from, okay? You are somebody who, you don't wait for somebody to fix things for you. You're not going to sit around and say, oh, I, you know, if everything aligns in such a way, then I will be able to, or if so-and-so can come through for me, um, then one day I will be able to, no. You get up and you make it happen. You figure it out. You know, um, you're in your heart of hearts. You are um, a magician, a witch, a uh, you know, an angelic force, a um, you know, a seer, a sage, a whatever you want to call it. There are so many names. The high priestess. Um, you know, it it doesn't it doesn't matter what it's called. You have that thing. You have that thing that cannot be read in books. You cannot learn this. It is something that, and I think this is, you know, so many people, this is why we have so many kind of aesthetic um, occultists or, or witches or, you know, uh, reconstructionalists of old religions and things, kind of role-playing their way through it. And that's fine. That's fun, I'm sure. You know, that's a, um, a good pastime. Um, but then there are people who have that thing. Um, and you absolutely, I don't, you maybe can be initiated into it through many years of, of experience and, and learning and, you know, maybe having some kind of guru or teacher or whatever. I don't know, but, um, it doesn't matter because <laughs> you're already doing this. It just comes to you innate. It's an innate thing. And I think it's something that runs in your family. I think that it's very prevalent even in your family members who are, are alive today. Um, this is part of the community of your life and it is something that feels natural. And, um, and I, you know, I think that there is a power here, uh, that I don't see in a lot of readings. I do not see this kind of, you know, um, just natural ability. Um, there, I, I, I see people who I'm, yes, you are a magician, you are an architect of your reality and, and all these things, which we all are. Um, but not a ton of magical workers. Okay, of practitioner, real practitioners, and um, and the goddess there that is enchanting. Um, I almost think you know maybe along the lines of, um, I mean it could be Aphrodite, but I almost think maybe Hera, although she, you know not seated. Usually Hera is in um, an enthroned position. Um, Sybil also enthroned, Hecate's triple. Um, so yeah, maybe one of the singular 
uh, youthful goddesses. It could be even maybe Diana, although she um, is usually in a different posture. So whatever it is, there is this, this I mean, it, a powerful middle goddess energy. And that is the, that is the, um, essence of the creative force. That is the middle goddess, um, uh, or the maiden goddess, not maiden, the like mother goddesses, the maidens are the younger ones. Um, the mother goddesses are, uh, of earth, but also of fire, right? These are the creators and the destroyers. And then they create again, and then they destroy again, and then they <laughs> always back and forth. Um, so, uh, yes, there is a sense of really coming into a place where um, you're getting out of that grumpiness, that kind of ick, whatever it was. And um, you know, I think that there is there is something new here. There's a little bit of uh, I don't know stirrings in the air. And, um, I can see you getting to work on your next potions, your next charms, your next, uh, maybe you're making some delicious soup or chili. <laughs> if so, send some of my way, I'd love to have a little bit, <laughs> um, you know, whatever it is, uh, there is that ooh, creative, creative energy. Um, now we also have a frog over here. So, um, with the frog, um, I always say the frog is the, in my, in my household anyways, the frog is the keeper of the outer perimeter of the home. Um, this is the backyard spirit who watches the out, outer sides of the portals or the doorways and windows of the home. Um, this is our little garden friend who keeps an eye on us. And so um, when I see him or her, uh, I always have to let you know, please go and check all of your doors, all of your windows. Make sure they're locking, they're secure. Um, you know, everything is where it should be. Um, even check your garage and everything else. Just kind of go out and take a look. I'm not saying that anything is wrong, but when we have certain symbols, it tells us, okay, we better go check, go see. Let's just go look real quick. Um, and you know, when I've said this before, we've, I've had more than one person tell me, um, I swear I locked my door, but I was about to go to bed and it's unlocked. Or, um, I found that, you know, a window was left open in my garage and I didn't open it, you know, things like this. So, uh, you know, it, it, sometimes the universe gives us these little indicators. Okay. Go, go make sure that everything is uh, you know, squared away there. TT, she's over there. What are you doing? Scratching the door. Yeah, it's open. You can come right in. TT. Okay, so we have a cow. So again, the mother goddess. Okay, we have Hawthor. Um, and this really is the energy. There's just really a very maternal energy around you. Um, I almost feel like it's a grandmother. A grandmother visiting. Uh, and this is me, somebody who has transitioned. Uh, coming to, you know, kind of check in with you. Um, and maybe you will be having dreams. Um, I also see a hand lighting incense. So I do think that this is, uh, somebody who will become visiting you, um, in your dreams, some kind of messaging, but I think it's less about any kind of revelation and more about a sense of love and security. Um, now with the incense, I think that this is definitely, um, kind of a feeling of filling your home with spirit, uh, filling your home with the energies, the vibe that, um, kind of makes you feel kind of 
cozy and and um a wholeness to it all like it this is this is you walk in and you're oh it smells nice in here I feel like I'm at home again um I I'm excited to be back in my nest you know and um and so yes and then the cow we have the Hawthorne cow and and grandma grandma uh nana or nona or um baba or whoever, whoever it is, um, coming through, coming through to see you and, and love you and, you know, give you a kiss on the head. And, and, um, and I think you will be feeling this, this, uh, grandmother figure, um, quite a lot. And maybe there's an anniversary coming up. Um, but they're on your mind for sure. Um, and I, the other thing I'll mention too, uh, and I, I, I don't always mention specific, uh, religious holidays, but I do feel like Easter for some reason, um, was particularly special for them, um, for, for this grandmother. So, um, you know, I think that the season, um, kind of, uh, feels like them less so than even like if you celebrate Christmas, um, I think Easter was kind of their, their whole deal. And, um, so maybe that's kind of nostalgic for you and that will be coming up pretty soon. I can't believe it. Um, we're already getting into this year quite a bit. Time is flying by. Okay, so we have a person praying. And this is where that kind of spiritual order comes to mind here. Now, you don't have to be a praying person. Um, you might have other techniques or maybe you just kind of have that interior dialogue. You speak to the divine. You speak to yourself. And, um, and you know, ponder, consider, um, kind of... Uh, use the words within your your mind heart soul to um help shape your reality and your circumstance and so i think this is a good time to engage in some of this um praying making appeals meditating contemplating um i you know the the idea of um finding order in our lives, making sure that, um, you know, we are living by, uh, our ideals or our, um, virtues, our, uh, our convictions and so on. Um, all of this is, you know, I think important in some, in some pretty profound ways, but I also think that, um, it's really important to continue to check in with ourselves as these things can and will change throughout our life. Um, and not only that, you know, we can have our ideas of what is, you know, uh, what are rules and, and tenets of, of living and, um, and hold those beliefs quite dearly, yet we do not live by them, not in a real way. Um, and so finding spiritual order in our life is so much about, um, you know, not only coming to these understandings, but enacting them in our daily life in a way that is actually meaningful to us. And um, we know when we're doing that, you don't need anybody to verify it for you, you know you know. And when you fall short of that, when you have kind of missed the mark or um, you feel that you have gone the wrong way or whatever it is, um, do not lament. Do not lament. Now, take responsibility, of course, um, but to live in a place of uh, worrying and toil and, and lamenting um, our, our past actions and, you know, kind of, uh, turning our wheels, um, and going nowhere, it's not useful. So what do we do? We, we begin by making a choice, you know, to end, um, a habit, to do something differently, to keep ourselves responsible and hold ourselves, 
um, you know, in a place of, uh, you know, of, uh, of honor and, um, you know, and maybe you have a support person to check in with or somebody to, um, discuss these things with maybe some kind of fellowship or, um, a dear friend, a confidant, a, a spouse, a lover, whoever it is, maybe a therapist, right? Um, always, you know, if you have access to therapy, always, um, prom I will always promote the idea that therapy, spirituality, magic, um, you know, whatever, all these things, they all go hand in hand. And if we have access to it, use it, use it. Um, you, you know, and if you can't find the right therapist right off the bat, you keep looking, you know, there's somebody out there that will make sense. Um, but, you know, I think that here, um, this is a time to, you know, be with yourself and, and to be with whatever your idea of the divine is. Okay. And this is where we do, we find spiritual order in this way. And, um, to get into the habit of praying is something pretty profound. Um, you know, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, it is purely up to you, uh, you know, but it is something personal and it is something, um, it is something beautiful and it is, it is, you know, it is whatever you say it is. So, um, maybe giving that a try. Maybe you, you have never prayed, you know, I never prayed until I was older. Um, I, fr I honestly believe the first time I ever prayed was, um, the morning that my mother died. You know, I, I had went, went to go wake her up and she had died over in the night and I was 11 years old. And, um, and I did not grow up in a religious household, a spiritual to, you know, to some degree, kind of a hippie family. But um, it was the first time I prayed, you know, and not, and, and it was out of desperation. <laughs> and I laugh because it's, you know, if I don't laugh, I will, I will stop. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, you know, it was out of desperation. And so for me, it was anchored in that feeling for a long time um, until I built a new relationship uh, with prayer, with being with the divine and, and a higher power and so on. Um, and, you know, and, and, in my fashion in most things in life, um, you know, getting in, taking a lot of artistic liberty with it and figuring things out the way I like them, <laughs> you know? And so, um, it, it is a beautiful thing and a beautiful journey. So, um, I will always, I will always, you know, ask people to at least try, give it a try. Okay. You're, you're, really locked in there. Let's say good night. How about we do? Oh no, we have doors. Let's look at the doors. Let's see. Uh, we have the divine doors, Oracle cards, and I'm just going to go ahead and flip through. We'll stop where it feels right. This is the first one. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Inner power by your own command. You brought yourself here at this moment in life. You have nothing to fear. There you go. What do you think, T? You got a booger right at my face. I'm gonna give you a kiss and we got boogers there. Oh, yeah, say I love you. I wanna read it one more time. Inner power. By your own command, you brought yourself here. At this moment in life, you have nothing to fear. I like that one a lot. That's something I I need to re I need to try to memorize. That. I will mess it up, but I'll know. I will understand the sentiment, right? <laughs> I'm so bad at remembering wording of things. Oh goodness! All right, Aries, it's time for bed. Um, it's getting late here. It's almost midnight, I think. 
So I want to tell you I love you, and I do. I love you so very much, and I appreciate uh, spending this time with you and you sharing your time with me. Uh, It is the ultimate gift. And so if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel so much. If you haven't subscribed, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell and it'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. And it's free, free, free to subscribe to the channel. And if you would like to leave a comment, please do. I read them all. And um, they are definitely my favorite part of the channel. So with that, I'll say again, I love you. Take care of yourself and we will talk in just a few days. Say good night, T. Can you say good night? She's over here snoring in my ear. Can you hear her? Maybe not. (laughs) She's snoring. She's such a little snorey. Oh yeah, there she goes. All right, love you. Bye.